it is not true that what this government has been touting as achievement is only free SHS. Free SHS has taken a life of its own because of the impact it has created. On what basis do we want to reset to a country in darkness for four years where young people cannot go to school because their parents don't have money? Uh, speak to one of them on education. It is not true that what this government has been touting as achievement is only free SHS. Free SHS has taken a life of its own because of the impact it has created. Mm. And let me give you some of the statistics. My personal story is known by everybody. Honorable even mentioned to you that Moshizongo, anyone who knows Moshizongo won't believe that someone will come out of the community and become a minister. And a lawyer. And a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> because we were looked at as the bottom of the barrel. And I'm telling you the difference between myself and other intelligent young people I grew up with who are still down there today is because of education. And it is because my mom will sell cloth. Me, myself, I will hawk. I will go on the street and sell everything just to go to school. When President Akufuado got the mandate, he said the decision to educate the Ghanaian children should not be left in the hands of parents. It should be a state responsibility. That is why in eight years or less than eight years, 5.7 million young Ghanaians have gone to school, public schools, high schools for free. Free accommodation, free tuition, free uniform, free feeding, free books under this government at a cost of 9.6 billion Ghana cities. So it has taken a life of its own to the extent that the NDC, the so-called socialists without social interventions, who said, uh, le led by the former president of the republic and their now uh, reset flag bearer, who said we should not implement free SHS on the whimsical promises of a desperate politician referring to President Akufuado, and that even developed countries who have attempted to implement free SHS have been unsuccessful, and that it will take Ghana 20 years to put in the necessary uh, framework before we can have a universally uh, free SHS for all the young people. President Akufuado didn't need 20 years. He did not even need a year. Because in less than nine months into office, he implemented free SHS, and Ghanaians are benefiting. That is why in 2016, when the NDC, they go to markets and they go to uh, the training colleges and all that, people were beating them and hooting at them. And they are shocked that today, after eight years in office, we are able to go back to the people to go and campaign. And finally, me raised an issue about the vice president of the, even before I come to that, the, let me give you some other data on the impact of free SHS on gender parity. Mm -hmm. Did you know that before free SHS, out of every hundred boys in high schools in Ghana, there were 64 girls. And today, out of every hundred boys in high school, there are 106 girls in Ghana. The percentage difference of about 42, the, the increase in percentage for the women accounts for all the people who were house helps, hawkers, head porters roaming about the streets who have no choice than to look for some small boy to buy indomie and we had rampant cases of teenage pregnancy now they are in school they are studying to also become the fatties of their moshizongos become their their ayokos of sotum and become their excellence in dansuman the girls the moment the financial barrier was removed by this npp government they took the chance and people are studying and do you know that nationwide this year, the northern region, Tamale, they recorded the highest transition rate of 95%. Meaning all kids who went to junior high school, 95% of them ended up in senior high school. Because the financial barrier has been removed. And if you remove the money matter, everybody wants education. But Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has never run out away or departed conversations about the economy and he has never been idle you and i know that we have the bank of ghana and the ministry of finance responsible for our monetary policy and our fiscal policy re uh, respectively that being said dr Baum mahmoud baumia's contribution
to economic development based on the duties and responsibilities assigned to him by the president of the republic he met us in uh, in february at upsa and outlined what he has used the mandate given to him as vice president to do and what are those activities with his exposure experience studying abroad contributing to ra academic writing on economy the vice president realized that the Ghanaian economy has fundamental and structural challenges. What are those challenges? Our economy was largely informal. The economy needed structural reforms and needed formalization. What do I mean by formalization? We lived in a country where we could not produce national ID cards. The NDC, as at the time they left office in January of 20. 17 was not able to produce even a million national id cards but they had the national identification authority sitting there and paying people salaries every month they couldn't even print national id cards within the last eight years about 18 million ghanaian adults are on national id cards we have our ghana cards now we brag about our ghana cards on social media if you say good things about Ghana on social media, we say come for your Ghana card. We have identification, something of pride. Since 20, the beginning of this year, children are giving Ghana card numbers at birth. They get their birth certificates and get their Ghana card numbers. As school reopens this month, children are from 6 years to 15 years are going to receive their Ghana cards in schools. Where we had the country, how do you develop a country when you don't have data on your population? When you have to wait for every 10 years before you can conduct population and housing census, before you can get data. That has changed. One typical example too. We live in a country where even when your health insurance expires and you want to renew, you have to go and join queue for two days. You will have to find chairs and stones, go and join queues, go and sit, sit in front of NHS offices at night and wait till the next day when they start at nine. When it's not your turn, they will tear a small paper and give you numbers for the next day. You will go and come back at dawn, come and queue again before you can renew your health insurance. NDC came to office, lied to Ghanaians that even the insurance that the Kufor led NPP government brought, we are supposed to pay it once in a lifetime and not pay again that one time premium if you pay 20 cd or 20, 30 cd that is all for the rest of your life they never implemented it they collapsed the nhis crashed it before they left office this government has come what about for do you know that today i can register for national health insurance card on my phone you can renew your card on your phone the Kenke seller does not have to close the business for 24 hours because they need to go and join Q to renew their cards. As we sit in this studio, if Asasi Radio should run out of ECG credits, I can sit here, take your meter number and buy credits on my phone for you. And within two minutes, your lights are back on. I pay my water bills on my phone. Mobile money into probability. I have my access bank uh, app on my phone. I have my Momo app on my phone. I just go on my access app, a bank to wallet, wallet to bank, move money around, pay for services. And I can go about for a week without holding a paper. And these are the structural problems with the economy that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has been solving. When we went to Samoa mm. for the Commonwealth uh, Heads of Government I, I meeting. I believe you are wrapping up. Yes, I'm mm. wrapping up just okay. a week ago. There <laughs> was, there was, a, Dr. Bahos, uh, yes. Mr. Bahos has to speak. There was a ministerial session for foreign ministers to share best practices. And I represented the Honorable Foreign Minister. And they were talking about health justice, access to health care. And I'm telling you, the respect Ghana has on the global stage. When it comes to education and healthcare delivery, I think we sit here and we undermine and underestimate our own and we don't even know the value that we hold in, in the eyes of others. This government has in eight years introduced so much technology in the health sector that when you go out there, even the Western countries, some of them don't have them. What am I talking about? Today in Ghana, 
we have an established medical drone delivery system that has coverage in 10 regions. They are coming to commission the last two centers to extend coverage to all 16 regions. So that if someone is in a remote area, there is a health emergency, we use drones to deliver our medicines, our vaccines, and blood with over 500,000 trips. Do you know how many lives have been saved? You are talking about an NDC government that did not even have ambulances. A country of 32 million, we have 55 ambulances. This government had to come and purchase 307 ambulances and make sure every constituency has an ambulance. A country where we had eight, as many as 87 districts without district hospitals. No referral hospitals. And Dr. Okoboy said something at the last press briefing, and I was so sad. He said if you have stroke in the Upper East region at the time, before President Takufuado commissioned the phase two of the Bogatanga mm -hmm. Regional Hospital, if you get stroke, they didn't have equipment to check what caused the stroke. They have to drive you ac across... Uh, Upper East through Northeast and bring you to Northern Region before Tamale Teaching Hospital can make a determination whether it is a hemorrhage or a clot. So when it is so urgent, the doctors have to do try and error on people of a region with more than a million people. And today, we sit here and we even think of talking about what this government has done in the past few years. It is not just about education. Mm. Evidence of transformation of this government in education, healthcare, tourism, roads, infrastructure, everywhere. As I go around doing this town hall meeting, it's evidence. Mm. And finally, you see this country. Look at our tourism sector. Ghana had a long history of being pan Africanist. When we used to organize Panafest, you will see about 20 Rastafarians uh, sitting at Elmina Castle. Nothing more. Ghanaians don't even participate. President Takufuadu came into office. And since 2017, he started organizing roadshow across the world that he is introducing the year of return, inviting all people of African descent to come back home. Year of return, beyond the return, renovating all our tourist sites, including the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, uh, Park the National Museum at Bonsu, Salaga Trade Market, uh, the Kente uh, Museum at uh, Ntonsu, and so on and so forth. Mm. Today, tourism is the w one of the largest contributors to Ghana's GDP, estimated to reach $5 billion by 2025. So Make on what year. basis? Yes. Mm. On what basis? Go to the airport, check the immigration, and see the inflows. Today, under this government, Ghana, our passport has never been this strong than under President Akufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's government. Because today, most of the African countries that we couldn't visit, Kenya, um, South Africa, the Caribbean countries, all of them visa-free for Ghanaians because of the respect recognition, the quality of leadership, okay. the skills in diplomacy and everything that this government has contributed to the image of Ghana. So on what basis do we want to uh, reset to a country where over 87 districts don't have hospitals? Why do we want to reset to a country where young people cannot go to school because their parents don't have money? On what basis do we want to reset to a country in darkness for four years?